All right, here's the calculator on the screen. Looks just like yours. Uh, let's go ahead and take four, and let's raise it to a power. I'm going to use the caret key right there. And I want to raise it to the power of one half. So four to the one half power. Hit enter, and I get two. So think about what I'm doing here. What's happening when I raise four to the one half power? Well, there's a couple things. Uh, I could be dividing by two, multiplying by half, get two. Or how else are two and four related? Well, two is the square root of four. Well, let's try something else and see if you can figure it out then. Let's take nine and let's raise it to the one half power. And I get three. So you should be able to figure out now that raising something to the one half power is really like taking the square root. All right, well, think about this. Let's raise 27. In this case, let's not raise it to the one half power. Let's raise it to the one third power. And I get three. Uh, so it looks like that bottom number acts as an index on a radical. All right, let's see that in a little more detail. Hi there, so you just saw me um, figure out that raising something to the one half power is like taking the square root of something. Um, so I have a few examples here on the screen. I have four to the one half power, and we just saw that on the calculator. That's really like taking the square root of four. How about 125 to the one-third power? Well, before, let's go back here. Square root of 4 is 2, so let's finish it up. 125 to the one-third power? That's like taking the cube root of 125. And that's going to give us 5. So if you type that in your calculator, you get 5. Now I can also take 8 to the two-thirds power, and that looks like this. 8 to the two-thirds power. So you can kind of see where the 2 and the 3 are ending up here. Same thing up with the previous examples with the 1 and the 2 and the 1 and the 3. The 2 looks like it goes on the inside. It's the exponent, and the 3 is the index. All right, so let's kind of carry this one out. So it's the cube root of 8 squared, which is 64. And this, the cube root of 64 is 4, so the answer is 4. So in general, down here I have x to the a over b power. Um, I'm going to draw my radical, put my x in there, and the a is the exponent, it goes right there, and the b is the index, or the root, and it goes right there. So you can remember it this way, this is kind of a little trick to remember how this works. This is called exponential notation. So if I write uh, 4 to the 1 half power, that's exponential notation. And if I write square root of 4, that's radical notation. And it means just what it says. Exponential notation, I have an exponent. Radical notation, I have a radical. So in order to remember how to write ra uh, exponential notation, you're going to remember exponent over root. All right, so why do I have a tree there? I know it looks like a, a mushroom cloud from a bomb, but it's not. It's a tree. The reason I have the tree there is the roots are on the bottom of the tree. So that means that root is on the bottom of the fraction. So exponent over root. Roots on the bottom of the tree, roots on the bottom of the fraction. Hi there, it's me, Mr. B. Let's write 5 to the 1 half power in radical notation. All right, radical notation means I have a radical in the answer. All right, put my 5 inside. Now I have exponent over root. So the 1 is the exponent, the 2 is the root. However, you would probably never see it written that way. The 1 is usually not written, the 2 is usually not written, even though they are there. So my real final answer is that. All right, let's write y to the 2 fifths power in radical notation. Of course, radical notation means there's a radical in the answer. So I'm going to put my y inside, and it's exponent over root. So the 2 is the exponent, the 5 is the root, and there's my final answer. All right, let's write 7 to the 1 third x to the 2 thirds power in radical notation. There's my radical. Now the 7 and the x both have different exponents, but you'll notice with each exponent, they have the same denominator. So that means the root, or the index, for both of these is 3. However, they both have different 
uh, exponents or the numerators in the fraction. So my exponent on the 7 is a 1. My exponent on the x is a 2. Now, again, you would never see 7 to the first power written, so probably the final answer, the way you will always see it written, is the cube root of 7x squared. Okay, let's change it up a little bit. Let's write the sixth root of a to the third in exponential notation. So we're going from radical to exponential notation. So I'm going to start with my base, that's an a. And the fraction that I'm going to raise it to the power of is exponent over root, so 3 over 6. Now, I look at 3, 6, and I think, oh, I can reduce that. And I can, so a to the 1 half power. So really, raising a to the third and taking the sixth root of it is the same as taking the square root of it, a to the 1 half power. There's my final answer. All right, so let's do another exponential notation. Uh, problem. So we're going to go from radical to exponent exponential notation. Uh, so I have a 5 and a c. Now if you notice, they each have different uh, exponents. Uh, so they're going to have different fractions that they're both, both going to be raised to. So in each case, the index is an 8 because they're both taken, it's both the 8th root of each um, each number, 5 and c squared. So the 8 is going to go on the bottom. That's the index. And on top is their exponents. So 5, the exponent on the 5 is a 1. The exponent on the c is a 2. Uh, I can't reduce 1 eighth, but I can reduce 2 eighths. So I have 5 to the 1 eighth power and c to the 1 fourth power. And that's my final answer.